In this episode of Real Chemistry, we're going to talk about calculating the molar mass of a molecule. Recall that the molar mass of something is just how much a mole of something weighs. So if I have a mole of hydrogen atoms, for example, then I know that weighs about one gram, and I know that from the periodic table. So finding the molar mass for an atom is pretty easy. You just look at the chemical symbol on the periodic table and find the number below it, and that's your molar mass. But say you have something like water, H2O. Now it's a little more complicated. H2O isn't anywhere on the periodic table. The hydrogen and the oxygen are, but not H2O itself. And so what you do is you look at the molar mass for hydrogen, right here, and you take it into account twice because there's exactly two hydrogen atoms in every water molecule. You also look at the molar mass of oxygen and you take it into account once because there's one atom of oxygen in H2O. And so in that way, we can use the periodic table to calculate the molar mass of any molecule we're given. So let's do it for water first. Well, H2O has two hydrogens and one oxygen. And we can see that in its structure below, as well as from the chemical formula. So here, our molar mass for hydrogen is 1.0079. So we're going to round those typically, and I'm going to round that to 1.01. So our molar mass for hydrogen, we're going to say is 1.01. And so if I want to know how much a mole of water weighs, well, I need to take into account hydrogen twice since there's two hydrogens in every water molecule. So I have 1.01 for my first hydrogen atom, and then I need to add 1.01 again for my second hydrogen atom. Next, I'm going to take into account the oxygen. So those two guys take care of both my hydrogens. And now I want to take into account my oxygen. And if I look down on the periodic table, we'll see that the molecular mass or the molar mass is 15.999 grams per mole. We're going to round that to 16.00. And that takes into account my oxygen. And now I just add them up. 1.01 plus 1.01 plus 16 is going to give me 18.02 grams per mole. And so that's how you calculate the molar mass of water. Now there's a trick I can do here to simplify this calculation. Notice that I have 1.01 twice. So instead of just adding 1.01 and 1.01, I can use multiplication. Instead, I could write the same thing as 2 times 1.01 plus 16. And that's a helpful shortcut. It's particularly helpful when you start, start, start to get tons and tons of atoms in a molecule. So, let's look at ethanol, which turns out to be drinking alcohol, C2H6O. Now we're going to use this rule, that, the simplification to calculate its molecular weight. And you can see that I've written out the calculation for molar mass, which is the same thing as molecular weight, down below. And all you do is you write the mass of your first element, and you multiply that by the number of your first element. And then the mass of your second element times the numbers of your second element, and then the mass of the third times the number of the third, and so forth, until you're through your whole molecule. So in this case, we look at carbon, which is our first element, and its molar mass on the periodic table is 12.01, and we know that we have two of those carbons. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down the mass of that, which is 12.01, times the number of carbons I have, which is 2. So the 12.01 comes from the periodic table, and the 2 comes from this 2 right here in my formula. So I've taken into account the mass of both of my carbons. Now I need to do the same thing for hydrogen. So I'm going to, I'm going to add 1.01, which is, recall, the molar mass for hydrogen, and now I should multiply that by 6, the number of hydrogens in my ethanol molecule. So times 6. All right, the last thing I need to do is take into account my oxygen. There's only one of those. So I'm just going to write plus 16.00, and I don't need to multiply it by anything because there's just one of them. If you want to write times 1, you can, you'll get the same answer. Now, I add those stuff up in my calculator, and I'll get out 46.07 grams per mole. So that is how much a mole of my ethanol will weigh. And actually, as written without rounding, it should be 46.08. So you get 46.08 grams per mole. That's how much a mole of ethanol weighs. All right, let's take a look at a slightly bigger molecule, C6H12O6. That is glucose, which is blood sugar. 
I can do the same thing. I just need to take into account carbon six times, hydrogen 12 times, and oxygen six times. So I need to do 12.01 for the mass of my carbon. And then I need to multiply that by 6 because that's how many carbons I have. And then I need to add that to the mass for my hydrogen, my second element, which if I look at the periodic table, once again, is 1.01. And then I need to multiply that by the number of hydrogens I have, 12. And then I need to do my oxygen. And the molar, molar mass of my oxygen is 16. And I need to take into account how many oxygens I have, six in this case. So you can see that really all I'm doing is adding up the mass for each one of my atoms, however many times that atoms occurs in my molecule. And when I punch that into my calculator, I'll get about 180.2. Grams per mole. So that is the molar mass of glucose. If I have a mole of glucose, it weighs 180.2 grams. One last example. This one is a little trickier because you'll notice that you have those parentheses in your molecule. What does that mean? Well, all it really means is this 2 you see applies to both our oxygen and to our nitrogen. So first, I'm just going to count up how many of each of those atoms we have, and then I'm going to talk about calculating the molar mass. So we obviously just have one magnesium because there's nothing below it. So there's just a one there. So for magnesium, we have one. How many nitrogens do we have? How many nitrogens do we have? Well, there's that two, and it applies to the nitrogen because it's inside the parentheses. So that means we have the one nitrogen in there two times, so two nitrogens. So two nitrogens, and then we want to know, okay, how many oxygens do I have? Well, I have that two outside the parentheses, and it applies to our oxygen. So if there's three oxygens in there on that parentheses, and I have that whole molecule in there twice, that means that I have a total of six oxygens. So you can multiply the number outside your parentheses, by the number inside your parentheses. So for oxygen, right, six is equal to our three times our two. And for nitrogen, our two is equal to our one inside our parentheses times our two outside our parentheses. So that's how you can figure out how many atoms are actually in this molecule. It's just like math, basically, where the number outside my parentheses applies to all the numbers on the inside of my parentheses. I have two of those NO3 groups, and that gives me two nitrogens and six oxygens. Okay, so let's remember that I have two nitrogens and six oxygens, and then let's go ahead and calculate that molar mass. So the first element I see is magnesium, and I need to go look on my periodic table for magnesium, and I see that it weighs 24.3 grams per mole, and I just have it once, so I just need to write 23 point, I'm sorry, 24.3. And I need to multiply that by one because there's just one of my magnesiums. And then I'm going to add to that the mass, the molar mass of my nitrogen times the number of nitrogens. And the molar mass of my nitrogen I can see is 14.007, which will round to 14.0. And how many nitrogens do I have? Well, two of them. And lastly, I need to take into account my six oxygens. So oxygen, again, weighs about 16 grams per mole. And how many do I have? I have six of them. So I add that stuff up, and I'm going to get my total, total molar mass for magnesium nitrate. That's what that compound is called. And it's 148.3 grams per mole. So that's how we calculate molar mass of compounds. All you're really doing is taking into account how many atoms of each type you have in a molecule and how much each of those atoms turns out to weigh. So using this formula, you can calculate the molar mass of any molecule you're given. Thanks for watching this episode of Real Chemistry. Please leave any comments or questions you have below. Also, please visit my channel to see a bunch of other videos on chemistry or subscribe to get updates about those videos.